Welcome back to the Melodic Caring Project. Today we travel to Los Angeles to tour the studio of composer Nathan Barr. During this interview, it dawns on us this is so much more than a studio. It's a temple dedicated to the power of music. Take a walk with us and enjoy an incredible song dedicated to our rock stars and hospitals around the country. <laughs> Joining us from LA, California, we have composer Nathan Barr. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. How are things? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to show everyone my studio today. Man, your space is amazing. Uh, I can't wait for the rock stars and for just everybody to, to get a sneak peek into what your day-to-day -day is. I'm curious, what? tell me about that though. Right now, what is your day-to-day? -day? I mean, with the way things are going. Yeah, I mean, it's so different right now. I have been working on a couple shows. I just finished a show on Netflix called Hollywood and a show on Hulu called The Great. So I, I have had work here, but my staff has spent at the houses uh, quarantining. So we've been going back and forth that way. So I have my two dogs here who keep me company and it's been interesting. So. So you, but you still have your time, your space. How, how have you found this time? Has it been inspiring or has it been almost, you know, kind of too much emotion to process to be inspired by it? I think it's like a little bit of both. I think it, in the first, uh, I think the first phase of it was kind of uh, uh, really sort of otherworldly and strange. And then once I got used to it, then I, I sort of found my creativity again and just have run with it and gone from there and it's been okay, so. Okay. Good. Do you, I'm curious, you know, just with your experience with creating and composing, do you think that right now you're kind of backlogging inspiration that's going to come out in a torrent later once you've had a chance to process or? I mean, yeah, maybe that's very possible. It's a, you know, like all of us, I've never been through anything like this before. So it's hard to say what, what will come, but uh, I, I think it's certainly a possibility that that'll, that'll happen. One question to answer before we get a tour of your amazing studio, you use music in a in a kind of a specific way right you use it to create mood or set a you know set a mood for a theme or a specific feeling that's trying to be delivered uh, on a film what can you tell me in one word what music means to you what music means in one word yeah uh i guess i would just use two words i'd say emotional connection um i think it's it's such a beautiful way for people to connect, even if they don't speak the same language with their mouths. Uh, music is just something, if, if I sit down to an instrument, and someone sits down to another instrument we've never met before, we can create something together without have, being able to speak to, a, to each other directly. And that, that is all about, to me, emotional connection. Yeah, I love that. It makes total sense. <clears throat> Cool. Well, show us around. Let's see your incredible yeah. space. Yeah, so this, this entire building is built around a big instrument. It's a pipe organ that was built in the 20s. <clears throat> that was a big part of Hollywood history, but I'll talk about that later. I'll start right here. Uh, this is a calliophone, it's called. It's, it's basically an indoor calliope. Calliopes were usually had steam uh, driving uh, sound, uh, air through the pipes and they're very loud. So this is an indoor one. So it's got a role player, like a player piano, and I'll just turn it on and let it play by itself for a minute so you can hear how it sounds. through as, the, as you play the key and that creates a sound and so it's, it's got this really amazing sound these were originally used on steamships back in the day to let people know that they were coming into town so someone would be playing the keyboard be super loud and everyone would go oh the ferry's coming and now i feel like i have obviously completely undersold your space by calling it a studio you have a museum <laughs> and a studio and yeah. uh yeah <laughs> so this is uh so this is an instrument that ben franklin invented uh, it was his supposedly his favorite instrument, and I just absolutely love it. Um, it's called a glass harmonica. So if you think of the word harmonica, get rid of the H and harmonica. And it's a series of crystal cups, and the pitch is determined by the size. But if I put water on my fingers... No way!
Isn't that cool? Beautiful? It's gorgeous. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it makes me think of, of the, uh, like the sonic healing, the bowls, right? That you can use yeah, to create those it's frequencies and pitches. In, in his day, it would have been pedaled, not, not with a motor, but today we can use this silent motor. And um, some of them were quite big and very few. This is not an original, it's a replica. The originals are very hard to find because they're so fragile over the centuries, they've, they've been destroyed. But um, yeah, it's just a really special instrument. And Ben Franklin used to accompany his daughter, so he would play this at his daughter. That's incredible. Yeah. So I know, I know that at the beginning we said, you know, let's try to keep this around 20 minutes. Why don't we just yeah. take that and just throw that right out the window and you just okay. give us the tour you want to give us because this is unreal. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah. This is, um, this, is a, um, this is a human bone trumpet from Tibet. It's called a kanglang. And basically some monks, when they passed away, they wanted their bones to be turned into relics. And so they would basically turn these into musical instruments. Um, and uh, they're, they're not uncommon. Uh, and they're played, still played in Tibet during uh, various ceremonies. And they make a pretty... Um, raucous sound i'm not even going to try and play it right now I, i've had some trumpet player friends try and play it and it's it's more for an effect than for music um but uh they basically hollow the bone out and then they put caps and these little jewels and stones on it and it becomes sort of something that's used in ceremonies it's just... wow it's like the ancient version of the organ donor program yeah yeah exactly i like that uh this is a this is a bowed guitar it's an electric guitar and it has a really beautiful sound, and I use this a lot. I've used it in shows like The Americans and True Blood, and um, let's see here. So yeah, basically it's got... I love that. It's got such a, I'm, I'm assuming, so you've got a little bit of processing, you got some reverb on there, maybe a little bit of delay, so it's got that big resonant feel to it. Exactly, and it, and it can do scary, it can do beautiful, it sort of does lots of different things, which is one of the things I like about it. So uh, how, so talk to me about, I mean, I'm, as you're on your way to your next spot, when yeah. you're doing music for True Blood or for you know one of these shows, do you watch the scene first and get a feel for okay, this is the feeling we need to evoke exactly that's exactly what it is basically um music exists in film and television to help tell the story and oftentimes it's used to help evoke whatever emotion the characters are feeling and so yeah as a composer i just grab one of these instruments and i watch the scene and i just start trying to plug into emotionally what's going on in the scene and then use these instruments to do that so i um, man i love that it's funny because you know i've talked to I talk to people who swear that they don't really like music, you know, nah, I'm not really a music person or whatever. What? But the reality yeah. is all you have to do is show them a movie and then take the music out of it and say, are you sure you're not a music person? Because yeah, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's so naked without that accompanying emotion that you provide to it. It would be, it would be a really different experience. I get to see films before there's music in it and before there are sound effects in it. And without those two, it's a totally different experience. It's kind of, probably half the experience of what you ultimately get once yeah. you, once you add the dollars. Yeah. Right. So this is a uh, uh, big uh, scoring stage, it's called. It's where we record music for movies and television. And so I get like a, probably about a 50 piece orchestra in here. Um, and so I, uh, let's see, I just did a film that comes out um, end of this year called Uncle Frank. Uh, and we recorded a 30 piece orchestra in here. And it's got a really beautiful sound so and it's yeah. totally isolated from the outside so it's, it's, it's really cool um, so this is another instrument that again plays on that sort of idea of a hurdy-gurdy this is an instrument that I uh, invented with the luthier it's basically a five string cello um, but what makes it special is it has this little round wheel again like the hurdy-gurdy and when I press this pedal it spins that wheel and makes a drone I can play over the top.
unbelievable. Yeah, and it's it's a uh, California black walnut. It's unusual wood for a cello. And then this little dude up here uh, it was based on a walking stick head that we saw at the Louvre. And uh, he's like a little puck, you know, like a little horned kind of devil guy. And uh, we thought that'd be fun. So the, the man who made this cello carved that out of wood. That's um, incredible. So what do you what do you call this instrument? I mean, you've it's how many people have invented an instrument? One and two. What do you name it when you do invent one? It's called a sympathetic drone cello. Um, so it's got these sympathetic strings, which you see in Indian music. And like the nickel harpa, if I play the main strings, those vibrate. Hear that buzz? Yeah, then my little mascots just joined. This is Muppet. And then Billy is somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so yeah, so that's, that's what this instrument's called. And it is a really special instrument. I've used this quite a bit. I just used it on a show at Amazon called Carnival Row. Um, and then um, I've used it, yeah, sort of all over the place. So how long have you been collecting instruments for? Uh, you know, honestly, since I was really young, probably since I was nine or ten years old, and then it got more and more eclectic as I learned more and more about what was out there. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to my friend Mark now, who's, who's a wonderful organist. And he's going to play this very special instrument. If you've seen The Sound of Music, the movie, you've heard this instrument. Um, so this is Mark. Hi. Um, Hello. Um, and and uh, this instrument here uh, was built in 1928. Uh, and it was very, it's got a very long history in the movies. You will see um, Mark's hands flying around here. And every single sound you're going to hear is a real analog instrument. Um, uh, so, so if you hear something that sounds like a symbol, it's really a symbol, and I'm going to take you up and show you that stuff after. Um, Nathan, this tour has been amazing. The instruments are, it's fascinating, um, and I cannot wait to hear the organ. But before we hear it, is there uh, specific kids and hospitals you'd like to dedicate the, the performance to? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I'd love, um, this is a really special performance that Mark is going to do to show off the organ. And we'd love to dedicate this and send uh, love and hugs to Kaylin and Parker in Washington, to Zachary in New Mexico, and then a little closer to home, the wonderful hospitals that are doing so much great work, especially now as we all go through this period, Kaiser Permanente, USC Medical Center, Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, and Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Thank you all so much for your incredible work. Uh, and this piece is something Mark has concocted. I think it's a, when was this written, Mark? Uh, not 1950. 1950. I can't wait to hear it. So it's called Roller Coaster, so we have to start at the theme park.
My word, Mark, well done. That is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. It's honestly it's stunning and kind of staggering. It's hard to take it all in. You know, I mean, you've created a music <laughs> citadel. It's like, you know, it's, like, it's, it is like a tribute to the the beauty and the power and the passion of music, you know? I It, it is, and, and like the, the ingenuity and the minds that went into like, how can we make music mechanically? How can we give one person even a bigger palette to play with? It's just like the the genius of the minds that, that created all these instruments. It's, it's just so special, especially culminating in the pipe organ, so. Are there any final words you wanna leave, you know, kind of with the world as we're going through all this? Yeah, I mean, I just think like one of the one of the great things that has come out of this whole quarantine around the world is seeing all the the incredible creative energy people have put into um, bringing a smile to people's faces, whether it's orchestras broken up into their individual homes, making music together um, or uh, people writing spe special things just for this time period. I love seeing that creative force come through the sort of inherent uh, tragedy of, of what's going on and, and, and uh, bringing, lifting the human spirit. So it's, it's been really great. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you or someone you know is battling illness and needs support, you are not alone. Sign up today at melodiccaring.org. And a huge thank you to all our first responders and healthcare providers working so hard during this COVID-19 crisis. We appreciate you. I'm Levi Ware. This is the Melodic Caring Project.